Hello there. This video is all about the types of data and analyses that you would perform for correlational and differential research strategies. While this topic was covered in a previous lecture, this goes into a deeper dive about correlational research strategies, data, interpreting results, and how correlational and differential research is applied. Remember that correlational and differential research can only detect if two variables are related, but really provides no explanation of why the relationship exists because there's no manipulation or control. So when you do correlational or differential research, you don't really know if X causes Y because there's a whole host of variables that could interfere with your interpretation of results. So maybe X doesn't cause Y, but maybe X and Y are related to some other Z variable, but there's no real direct causal relationship. Remember, the only way to make cause-effect conclusions in research is to conduct a true experiment. However, many correlational studies that replicate results or meta-analyses based on several correlational studies can effectively help us understand the relationships among variables of interest and can be really useful. So for example, a hiring manager knows that um, conscientiousness is really important and that conscientious employees tend to be better performers but they don't really know why. Well, it's still a good idea to use conscientiousness screening tools in employee selection because you know it's a predictor of performance even if you don't necessarily understand why it is a predictor of performance. And that's where theory kind of becomes handy where you can apply different theories of behavior based on past research to the results you find in correlational or differential research analyses. So don't be nervous, but we are gonna be looking at statistical analyses in this lecture. And I'm gonna get into kind of the nitty gritty of the types of variables that lend themselves to these different types of analyses and the types of research strategies that lend themselves to these analyses as well. So the most common type of statistical analysis that you see in this type of research is Pearson's product moment correlation, or R is the notation. And this is when your X and your Y so X is usually your quasi-independent variable and Y is your dependent variable. Those are measured on a numeric or interval or ratio scale. And you wanna look at the linear relationship between those two variables in a single group. So for example, you could see if age is related to caffeine intake. And so your hypothesis could be older adults tend to consume more caffeine. That's your X variable, right? That's age in years, your independent variable or quasi-independent variable, you could say. And then Y would be your dependent variable, caffeine intake. And you could measure that by looking at the number of milligrams of caffeine in a one week period of monitoring. And you could just use a survey to do this type of research. And again, most correlations that you see are this type of correlation, where we're assuming a linear relationship between the two variables and we're looking at Pearson's R. There's another type of correlation coefficient though, that's called Spearman's rank order correlation. And it's notated with like a funky P kind of like Greek notation. And this is the same type of data as a Pearson's R, but in this case, you're expecting a curvilinear relationship such that it's not linear where increases or decreases are consistent as variables get higher values or lower values. You could have a U-shaped distribution with your scatter plot where the highest, y, the highest values of Y are at the lowest and highest values of X, or you could have an inverse U in your scatter diagram, where the highest values for a variable Y are for people with moderate levels of X. So let me show you an example. So this is an inverse U example, and this is the same variables as before, but the nature of our data has changed. So we can see we don't have a linear relationship, so we'd have to pivot to using a Spearman's rank order correlation. So this again is looking at his age related to caffeine intake, but now this data reflects a hypothesis that would be younger adults and older adults tend to consume less caffeine than middle-aged adults. Again, the X value, the quasi-independent variable is age and years, and the Y, the dependent variable is caffeine intake or number of milligrams of caffeine in a one week period of monitoring. So it's good to kind of visualize your dots before you run your analyses. Even though you're not running analyses in this class, it's just good to know how this is done. The next one is a chi-square test for independence. So this is a situation where you wanna look at the relationship between two variables, but you have non-numeric data on a nominal or ordinal scale of, scale of measurement, where you're looking at categories instead of raw scores. So here's the same example, but in a different strategy. So here, our hypothesis could be that young adults, 18 to 29, and older adults, 50, 
are less likely to consume caffeine regularly than middle-aged adults. So here, we didn't use the raw scores, right? We didn't look at age, 18, 19, 20, 21, right, raw values, or caffeine as how much caffeine they consumed. We used those variables to categorize people. And so these would become ordinal variables uh, for age group young, middle-aged, older. Yeah, we know the order of those groups, but we don't know how much older somebody in the older group is than someone in the middle age group because we kind of took that raw data out of it. And then for caffeine, this would be more of a nominal variable where they consume it or they don't consume it. And again, that would be appropriate for a chi-square test, not a correlation analysis. So the differential research strategy is also looking for a relationship between two variables where nothing is manipulated, there's no intervention. But in the differential strategy, instead of looking at the raw scores for both variables, one of the variables is used to categorize the people in your study. And so the differential research strategy is focused on examining how a variable of interest is related to a relevant pre-existing individual difference. So for instance, does caffeine intake vary between old and young adults, right? And this is where there is no treatment or manipulation involved. So for this type of research where you're just comparing two groups, you could use a t-test for independent samples. And this is where you've got the x or the categorical nominal or ordinal quasi-independent variable, and you have two levels of that. And then y, your dependent variable, needs to be measured on a numerical interval or ratio scale. So where the, with the chi-square analysis before, we were counting how many people fit in each category. That's where those numbers came from. But here, the numbers are going to be based on the dependent variable in its raw form. Then you look to see if there's differences in means for the dependent variable, y, based on the quasi-independent variable, x, those two groups that you're looking at. So for instance, we could see if age is related to caffeine intake with a differential type of study with only two groups, which would be fit for a t-test. So here again, we could think middle-aged adults tend to drink more caffeine than younger adults. And instead of in the chi-square where we were counting how many students or how many people fit each category here, those numbers represent the actual mean level of caffeine consumption in milligrams. And so we could use a t-test to see if there's a significant difference in the mean caffeine intake between young and middle-aged people. And ANOVA is very similar for, at, to a t-test, except this is a situation where you have differential research and you're comparing three or more categories, not just two. So for instance, we could look at the, um, is age related to caffeine intake? And then see if there's a difference in caffeine intake between middle-aged adults. So maybe we think that middle-aged adults tend to drink more caffeine than younger adults and older adults. And again, our data, our values, represent the mean of that score, not the number of people in that category. And we could use an ANOVA to see if there's a significant difference across any of those groups. All right, so this was a quick lecture because I know that statistics can be a little intimidating, but again, it's really important for you to see the relationship between research strategies and statistical analyses. So when you look at journal articles later in the semester, you'll have a better understanding of why they chose the research uh, or why they chose the statistical analyses that they did, and you'll have an easier time interpreting the results.